Hello and welcome. It's Frank Klesitz, CEO of Viral Marketing. Welcome to this live Google Hangout on air of the Database Marketing Hangout, where we interview, in this case, lots of real estate professionals and business people on how they're working their database of past clients, centers of influence, maybe unconverted buyer or seller leads uh, to grow the business and to provide more value and help more people. And uh, in this hangout today, you're going to meet John Carbuti. John Carbuti is a, is, a, is, a, is a top broker up in the New Haven, Fairfield, Connecticut area. His office uh, will do about a million GCI this year. He has about 28 agents. Uh, 12 of those, I believe, are on his team within his office. And he'll explain how all that works. But he's done a fantastic job of buying the office from his broker about you know five years ago, four or five years ago, where he's every agent for themselves on their traditional model and turning that whole brokerage around into like this, this intertwined system to consistently produce leads, convert leads, deliver service, you know, get referrals in the back end. But specifically, you know, this isn't going to be a hangout on you know growing a brokerage necessarily. We're going to talk about how he gets emails, how he communicates with people, and how he works the database to not only get more business for real estate, but also recruit agents to his team. And if that's something you're looking to do, if you're looking to build a team, if you're a broker, I think you'll learn a lot today. So John, thank you so much for being on the Hangout today, man. Thank you for having me, Frank. Good. And if anyone would like to follow some of these future Hangouts, um, you can obviously subscribe on Google+. Plus. You can follow us and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can go to the Hangouts tab on our website, getviral.com, watch all the previous Hangouts. We're going to start getting transcriptions of these so you can look on your iPad or whatever and read them. It might be faster for you to make them more valuable. And uh, there's no selling here on the Hangouts. So obviously, if you're interested in doing what we're doing, because we do a lot of this for John, uh, you can go and get all the information up on our website and request a free strategy session if you're interested in that. I'll get that out of the way. But John, let's just get down into the content and people want to learn. Let's just kind of go through the story of kind of how you started off with your brokerage and kind of the story of the systems you had to get in place to get it to where it's at today. Okay. So why don't you just tell people, you know, you bought the brokerage from your dad and what did you end up with when you bought the brokerage from your dad? Um, yeah, my dad had started the company in 86 and my dad had been in the business since 77 and I kind of grew up in the real estate business. And, you know, I feel fortunate that I had my dad as a mentor, but, you know, he really didn't have a lot of systems in place. And when I purchased the business from him on May 11th of 2010, I really had to kind of start from the ground up and um, I had to put a transaction coordinator in place. I had to find a website to generate leads and also have a back end CRM for my agents to follow up with those leads and also have a dashboard for me to follow up with them. And um, you know, it, it was, it was, it was very challenging and difficult going from a top producing agent, which I was, into the, like this broker management team leader position. And, you know, I'll say nobody made more mistakes than I did kind of learning and I'm still learning as I go along. And um, that's really, you know, that's really the story. Um, and, you know, incorporating the video, um, obviously meeting you back in 2011 and hooking up with viral was one of the best things that I did because not only were you to help, not only did you guys help me incorporate the video, into my marketing, which wasn't, it's not, it's not a question of whether I wanted to do it. I had to do it. And not only did you guys help me incorporate the video, you guys helped me incorporate different systems. And I bounced a lot of ideas off of you, Frank. And I, we had many discussions as you can remember and many coaching calls and we tried different things that um, worked. And then we tried other things that didn't work and kind of brought us to where we are today. Yeah, to talk about the things that did work and maybe what not to do. That exactly. we can try to do the past four years. Oh, I, I, could, I, I could tell anybody what not to do. So we started off, the very first thing that you did was you had to take the financial plunge of probably here's all the money I'm making as the rainmaker. Yeah. Now I have to invest it in all these systems to provide for the agents or to pull myself and free up my time so I can recruit and build the office. Absolutely. Right? And I think one of the first things that you did was the, was the, um, the real estate video blog. And for anybody watching this, by the way, um, you may have to exit out of this window. I'm not sure how your Google Plus looks, but back on the comments page, on the actual Google Plus page, uh, down below, I made a little post that has links to all of John Carbuti's examples. So if you want to see his real estate video blog, you want to see his recruiting blog, some of his community video tours, and we talk about those things, you're more than welcome to keep this open, go to a new tab and take a look at those examples so we can follow along. So right now I want to talk about the strategy behind getting more business from the database of the real estate video blog that we put in place. So can you tell me why you decided to do that and what was the need? Um, 
Well, I needed a way to follow up with my past clients. Um, I needed a way to nurture my online internet leads that we were generating. We were generating, you know, anywhere from 300 to 400 um, new registrants and uh, emails a month. And I needed a way to nurture and follow up with these people without having to call them every single day. And um, the, the video has really served served me well with that. And I've, um, I remember the first time um, it, I was with Viral for about, um, we, were, we were nurturing the internet leads for about three to four months. And my phone rang on a Wednesday afternoon. And I still remember that call. And I picked up the call and the guy said, is this John? I said, yeah. He goes, is this John Carbut? I said, yes. And he said, my name's Ron. You know, I'm not going to say his last name because my, my name's Ron. He goes, me and my fiance want to come in and talk to you about a real estate problem. And I was feeling really good that day. And normally I press people for more information. I said, listen, my office is at 43 Hall Avenue. I'm across from the train station. Meet me tomorrow at four o'clock on Thursday at my office. And he goes, I know where you are. I said, good. And I hung up on him. And the next day at four o'clock, I was having bets with the guys in my office, whether he was going to show up. Sure enough, four o'clock came, came around. He showed up, walks in the door. I introduced myself to me. Said, "Hi, I'm Ron. This is my my um, my fiance, Lisa Ann." And uh, I said, "Hi, Lisa Ann." We went in the conference room, sat down. I said, "How can I help you?" He goes, "Well, I got a condo to sell at 157 Metacoma Drive in Meriden, and she's got a house to sell at 177 Parker Farms Road. We're getting married in two months, and we want to buy a big house together." I said, That's "Great." Nice. So, I sold his condo in two weeks. I sold her house in 10 days. I sold them new construction at 44 Long Hill Road in Wallingford for $340,000. Where did they come from? Does the video play into that? Absolutely. Um, as we were leaving the office that day, as we were leaving the office that day, he turned around. And he said, by the way, I really love your videos. That's why I decided to use you. So I went to my Boomtown database, typed in his last name, and sure enough, he was in there for three and a half months. And at first, I was, I thought maybe we weren't doing our job. And I looked at the notes. We tried calling him twice. No answer. We sent him three emails. And it just goes to show you that he called me when he was ready. Not He didn't want to answer the phone or emails. How long was he in there since you registered? Three and a half months. Okay. Yeah. And I actually, I've done, I've done, six transactions through that one contact so far. That's incredible. Yeah. So let's go back to really what you were saying here so I can drive down for the audience is that originally we just started off, you had a Boomtown site and you, so you're paying the licensing fee for that. What is that? 1500. Then you're putting what a thousand dollars a month in AdWords. I was a thousand. Yeah, I was. And then I was up to 2,500. Yeah. Month. So you were going, you know, that was a hot time. You know, we need buyers back then. That was a yeah, hot thing. Absolutely. So, you know, you're spending three, four grand a month, bringing in those leads, 300 leads coming in. Did you even have an ISA then? No, I did not. <laughs> okay. So we started using the videos as something to get to them. Right? Absolutely. And then people Absolutely. would call you from that. And then you implemented the ISA and that took it to a whole new level. A whole new level. ISA for anyone that's curious is short for like an inbound or inside sales assistant. That's just someone who sits there for an hourly, hourly rate, maybe a small commission just to sit there and call all those leads to find the goals off all the opt-ins that come in. So, so you used originally it for lead conversion. So we took all your Facebook friends, all your LinkedIn friends, and then we also grabbed the Boomtown database, put the videos on there, and that really helped. Is there Absolutely. anything that you can share if we talk about lead conversion that the videos have done for you? Any tips you can offer anybody to, so if they have lots of unconverted leads, how to get results like you have? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think just to really start using the video and, and, and hitting your database in general, I mean, hitting them monthly because- Twice a month hitting them twice a month bi-weekly and the thing with the videos is that once they st once they start getting your videos and watching your videos it's i mean it's a no-brainer that they're going to use you you almost become like a little instant celebrity and they feel like they know you and that's really the competitive advantage that i've had with using the video and the experiences that i've had okay. um I, I my 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 advice if you're not using the video would be to just start and um, when I started my videos in the beginning, I mean, I was shooting them myself. Um, they were you terrible. Were using the, uh, you were using the original flip cam that first came out. They were terrible. I mean, the audio was terrible. The picture quality was terrible. Yeah, in hindsight, knowing what you can get now, they were pretty bad, but they worked because it was new during the time. Absolutely. And we'll Absolutely. get into that. You know, John has hired a professional video person. We're going to cover the cost and what the professional video person does when we get into kind of how to create these videos. Yeah. But right now I still want to talk on, the on, on building the list that you send these videos to. So your yeah. list has really come from 
the buyer leads that come from Boomtown, and you're probably finding a lot of sellers hidden in those leads. Oh, we get a t- we get a ton of sellers disguised as buyers. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, no one's going to put their house on the market without first going into the marketplace, seeing what they can get for their money, where are they going to go? Um, ton of sellers disguised as buyers. Okay. How else are you building your database? So obviously we're buying the leads online. That's pretty straightforward. And yep. they go on, they, then they come to us, they get the two videos a month. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. What other sources of emails and how do you get them? How do you bring them into the database? You know, real estate I mean, blog? Absolutely. Um, everybody that, signs in for open houses with the email addresses. We're putting those people in there. Um, we've been doing a ton of Facebook lately and a ton of paid Facebook ads with these seller valuation sites. And I just started how's doing that, it. How's that working? That's hit and miss. How is it's, it? It's funny you say that. Um, I just signed up for the prime seller leads about seven days ago and I hired them for like $99 to um, manage it, post the ads. I gave them admin access to my Facebook. I got 59 seller leads in seven days and a lot of phone numbers. And actually I got my ISA in the other room right now. Nicole just calling, she's just focusing all on those seller leads right now. That's incredible. And then those leads, obviously those emails are going you know, yeah, and, are probably and, way upstream. Yeah. To make and a, decision. Mo- a lot of them are like our partial, like a lot of them aren't giving us the phone number, but we're like more than 90% of them are valid email addresses. So we're just, we're putting them right in into the videos and we're just going to start hitting them with the videos. Great. So we have Facebook lead generation online. We have open houses. When you meet people, you're getting their email addresses. Yeah. We have the AdWords to Boomtown house. Um, past clients, um, people that I know, um, a lot of networking groups, I'm putting them in there. Um, I've been doing, um, I know we're going to get to this later, but I've been doing a lot of these community spotlight Mm -hmm. um, videos, which are working out tremendously. And I'm putting them in there. Basically everybody that I meet. Okay. How many people? So, so roughly, this is what I want to get at here is certainly we can nurture the online leads that they don't really know who you are and you're bringing them on your videos. They get to know you. That's great. But the best results and again, it's hard. I know you have so many things going on hard to track, but probably yeah. I would say the open houses and get those emails face to face. And those those contacts are huge. Absolutely. And past clients and sphere is really the center of the program and where you get the most results. Are there yes. any stories you can share with anybody about how to, you know, from a number standpoint, I mean, how many emails outside of the online ones are you adding to your database, say, every week? Every week? Um, not, not online. The non online emails. Not online. Every week? I mean, at least 20 to 30 a week, every week. a week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So don't pay attention to that. So that's 20, 30, 20, 40, 60, 80 emails a month of legitimate people you've met and had a real conversation with, or something your team has that are coming into your database. Absolutely. And uh, I want to tell you another success story with the video. Um, I had a client, I sold his house at um, 36, 36 Cliffside drive here in Wallingford. Um, back at the end of 2012 and he moved down to Florida and um, he's been on my database since 2012. I've been hitting him with the videos and he watches all of my videos. He loves me. We sold his house in like 48 hours. Um, He referred his good friend to me a couple days ago who just came back from Florida visiting him and we're going to be selling his house in Madison for $600,000. And he was watching my videos with when he called me from Florida his buddy who has the house to sell in Connecticut was with him down in Florida and they were watching my videos. Okay. So let's get into, I want everyone to understand the email building and that's why I want yeah. to start these off is just the online leads getting them in there. You're going and you're talking to people. Mm-hmm. I love the open houses. Like people say, how do I get emails of people in a neighborhood? Like how can I get the email emails of everybody in this condo building, everybody in this neighborhood? Absolutely. Well, get a listing, hold a mega open house. Everyone shows up, you get their email. That's, that's what I would like. So let's talk again about the videos. Now, you were an English teacher in Japan, weren't you? I was. All right. So if anyone kind of tells John's <laughs> wonderful personality style, he is so <laughs> soft and he is so sweet and I love him so much. <laughs> you're just so approachable. Really. I mean, you really are, man. You really, really, really are. So when you have to teach in front of these videos, you come across very naturally. You, could, you, do, you do a great job on your videos because you were a teacher for many. How, how many years are you a teacher? Uh, about two years. About two years. All right. So when we first started the videos, you were doing them on the flip cam. I was. But then you realized, you know, how can I really make the best content for my audience? And you took it a step further. Why don't you tell us that story, how you got some professional video production in. And let's talk about the time that took and the money you spend on that. 
Absolutely. Um, I was shooting the videos myself and uh, w what was happening was it was really time consuming. It just, it was too time consuming and the quality, the picture quality and the audio just wasn't there. So um, by chance, I actually found a young guy that's living in his parents' basement back in 2012. And he actually went to film school and graduated from film school in New York City. And um, I approached him about doing some videos for me. And now he does all my video shooting. He does all my editing, um, everything. I don't do a thing. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely he love said, it. He sends in perfect videos to us. And we just market them and do our yeah. job. And I have the two video blogs now. Um, I have the real estate blog at jonathancarbu.com, and then I have the agent training blog at the real estate careers in and I just shoot six videos in advance. Um, um, we just basically shoot them within like an hour and 20 minutes. So he comes in. So let's go through kind of how that works. So you found this, this individual for about yep. two to $300. Is that right? Yep. Two to $300 will come in with amazing. The microphone he uses is incredible. And the camera he uses is incredible. That's probably Absolutely. a $5,000 setup he has. Absolutely. He comes in for about an hour and you yep. cut all six videos in about one hour, right? That's it. So we'll, we'll go into this. So you're doing the two educational real estate videos every month, which is some Q and a question, answer, market update, whatever it may be just for your, all your entire buyer and seller list. Absolutely. Then you shoot two other videos on how to be more productive in real estate and how to exactly. sound like a real estate coach. Exactly. And that goes on your recruiting blog and that's real estate careers in New Haven. You can go look at those and those go out to all the area agents to help show agents the value proposition to come into your office. Right? Absolutely. What's the other two? Um, Why well, I, I shoot six, I shoot six videos in advance. So I'll shoot the three videos for the, um, training blog and then I'll shoot the uh -huh. six videos. So this way I'm, I'm set for eight weeks. So basically I shoot the six videos in advance and I set it and I forget it. I don't, I don't have to shoot any more videos for another eight and weeks. That's probably as many as I would do before they get a little outdated or they're not. Really exactly. Timely. And that, and that's, that's where you might run into trouble is not having them as timely, especially with the weather. Yeah. Okay. So what tips could you give somebody to come up with some good content that people actually want to watch? Cause clearly they're watching your videos yeah. and you have something useful to say. Yeah. So what do you say? Um, it's interesting. It's like, um, in the beginning I was trying to script it, but then I, I realized that it was much more natural not to script it. And really, we don't really plan too far in advance from when he gets there. And I'll look at like, I'll, I'll get on like Inman connect, or I'll just look on line and see, you know, I'll look on Facebook and see what people are talking about. I do market update reports. Um, I just, kind of see what people might be interested in. And sometimes we'll gear the videos towards buyers and sometimes we'll gear them towards sellers. And we try to, you know, we'll talk about HUD properties or a good deal for the buyers or where they should be looking. Um, you have these new online um, um, auction sites like hubzoo.com. A lot of people aren't familiar with. We did a video on that. People thought it was really cool. Actually, I bought my first house back in December off of hubzoo.com and it was a very, um, easy experience. It was a very easy thing to do and I got a great deal. So like this is, these are the kind of things that we like to talk about. Um, and as far as the agent training videos, I mean, those are pretty easy. We just talk about different things that we're doing throughout the day, different books that we're reading um, in my real estate team. I mean, I have these guys reading at least three to four books a month. And so they read them? They read them and we talk about right. them. It's good yeah. culture you got. Absolutely. Um, just to clarify for anybody, the, the, probably the easiest way to start, you know, John's been doing this for a while, so he's pretty advanced. He can come up with some topics just off the top of his head in the moment. But the best ones would be is just answering questions from your agent about how to grow their business, like questions they ask you during the one-on-one -on -one meetings and just share Absolutely. it with the group, as well as questions that maybe buyers or sellers ask that you just share in your videos. And again, you can go to those examples and look at his blogs and watch his videos. You'll see what professional video can do to shoot it, all right? And you also see how John presents the content, which is really good. Um, now let's move into, um, the calling and the following up of the people who watch them. Mm -hmm. How has that helped you? Have you been doing it? We started doing it, um, religiously. Just recently after four years? Last, yes. Um, <laughs> I will admit. And okay. because we were, I, w I was so busy with those other online leads coming in, um, and it works. Um, we actually called, um, in the last 30 days, um, we got three listing appointments off of that list with having Nicole call the people that were watching the videos. Okay, hang on. So you got three listing appointments calling. So you maybe get, I mean, I wish I had these. You know how big your list is? How big is the list you have on file at Viral? Oh, it's got to be. Um, it's probably 10,000. It's probably a lot. Uh, more than that. Okay. Yeah, more. And that's built over time. 
Yes. Everyone starts. Everyone starts at zero with their list. When you're born, your list is zero. Absolutely. So everyone starts in the same space or same place, and um, you know maybe two, three percent if you're lucky actually watch those in the video about how to sell a home, how to buy a home. Mm -hmm. You're calling the people who watch the video that are in your yes. database, yep. as well as anyone who clicks the call to action links that may want to request a free value report or search for homes. Those links are also in those emails. And you just started doing it. We just started doing the last thirty days. And on your very last report, you got three listings? I got three listing appointments out of it. It's great. You got to be emailing yeah. me and tell me about these results. That's fantastic. Uh, I, I will. I definitely will. <laughs> Good. All right. Why did it take so long? And what does someone need to know to speed that process up? Because you probably missed a lot of business by not doing that. E yes. What does yes. somebody need to know? Um, I think from the beginning, you need to get in the habit of um, calling that list. And if you're not willing to call that list, hire somebody like an ISA and train them how you want to call that list, which is which is what I've been doing with Nicole, who has been an absolute rock star. Um, that would be my best advice is, you know, if you are going to take the time to shoot all these videos and hire viral to send out the videos twice a month and provide you with these reports and lists, you're missing out on a lot of business. So I would I would say do it right from the beginning. If you're going to make this commitment, make that commitment to call or hire someone to call. And what's what's the price point of the price range or the comp structure you would recommend to hire somebody to do calls for you? Okay. Um, I've been on the same, I mean, there's different, there's different theories and schools of thought out there for paying an ISA. Some people pay their, I have a licensed ISA. My, my ISA has a real estate license. Some people actually pay their ISAs like a percentage of the sale. I don't do that because um, it's too much money. I pay my ISA $12 an hour. I pay her $15 for every appointment that she sets. That I pay. Um, that that shows up with my agents yeah. absolutely. That's, an important, them, that's yeah. an important distinction. Absolutely. Um, so my agent has to go on the appointment. They have to be pre-approved. Uh, she gets another twenty-five dollars immediately if it turns into a signed buyer broker agreement or a signed listing agreement, and she gets a hundred dollars when it closes. Cool. And and that works oh. well for us. Hey, Scott just pulled. Uh, thanks, Scott. You have a uh, sixty-eight hundred people in your database. Okay. Yeah. Well, we scaled it. We we scaled it down. Um, yep. 15% people, 15% open, 2% click, which is pretty standard. Yep. So out of those 6,800 people, you know, you had 137 clicks to call. Yep. Which really kind of narrowed down the 6,800 to call, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> right? And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. And, and what's wrong with that, right? Yeah. Out of those 137 people, uh, you got three listing appointments. Congratulations. Absolutely. All right. It's good to share those numbers, everybody. Okay. So you have someone making those calls for you, which is fantastic. I think maybe we should talk a little bit about the script. What do they say? Or what should someone say when they're following up with somebody who watched a video? I mean, it's a really simple script. I mean, she calls up the lead and she says, hi, this is Nicole with Carbune and Company Real Estate. And Jonathan asked me to give you a call and just see if there's anything that we could help you out with. Has your situation changed at all? I know you've been speaking with Jonathan and he's been busy and we wanted to make sure you were getting the customer service that you deserve. Just starts the conversation. Easy enough. It's a customer Easy. service role. Easy. Aaron, Aaron has a question. And feel free to ask questions, guys, during the Hangout. That's why we do them live and not recorded, so it can be more interactive. So Aaron, thanks for taking the first step forward and asking a question here for the, in front of the group. <laughs> everyone, everyone is saying short videos are best, but the best marketers are using long ones. What are your thoughts on that? It's a good question. I don't think I've given too much thought on it. Um, I know myself, I don't really want to watch a long video. I've had the most success with the shorter videos. Um, I, I think I think the long videos, I think the long videos could work for you if you have the right audience and the right person and you're holding their attention. Yeah. If you're going, my best answer, Aaron, would be is that if you're going just to a large list, that's just you're just trying to like just touch them and let them know who you are. Two to three minutes. Yeah, All that's right? it. it. Tops. Um, if you're making like a sales presentation video or a pre-listing video, that a very interested prospect's about to make a very expensive decision or a very important decision, a very complex decision, the video is as long as it needs to be. Um, so I'd probably say, you know, videos between 20 and 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, like a TED talk. I'd say it's either two to three minutes or I'd go to like maybe 20 minutes for like a demo video. But even this, man, this is a, this is going to be a video. This video is going to be an hour long for this hangout for anyone who wants to rewatch the replay. So it just depends upon the situation. That's where kind of some, you know, some, some consulting comes in. 
All right. So we talked about how you get your emails for your real estate business. We talked mm -hmm. about how you send your videos out. And then we talked about how you prioritize follow-up. Mm -hmm. and, and all of these lists are kind of your your lists or your brokerage lists. These aren't really going to your agents lists, are they? Um, my agents are putting their sphere. So like they're like the agents on my team. So are they are, all their they are submitting their sphere. Oh, absolutely. They are. So that 6,800 includes the sphere of all of your agents. Absolutely. Yes. So like their past clients, their friends and family. Yes. Okay. How did yes. you get that? I asked them for it. I told them I want it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Okay. What happens if your ISA calls one of my past clients? How do you know the lead comes to me? Um, if my ISA, well, we'll, we'll, well the, the lists are segmented by agent. Yeah. You, um, you know, I'm sorry. We do this. When you submit those lists, I know like you have your big list, but I know which list is from each agent. So that sh there should be a column on that on yeah. the call report of who's, who, who is the owner of that contact. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Answer my own question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. All right. Let's move on to recruiting and what the title of this video is here. Okay. Let's talk about building your list, making videos, yep. and prioritizing follow-up from a recruiting standpoint. So talk yep. to me about how do you get emails or how do you get the contact information of agents you want to bring into your office and maybe some mistakes you made, things you've learned. Mm -hmm. What could you share to another broker that's looking to recruit with video? Yep. Um, wh what I've been finding out is a lot of the, rather than me, calling other agents or me like recruiting, making outbound calls, we've been attracting agents. Um, I actually have three agents in real estate school right now that actually came to me through YouTube. And I have a fourth guy, his name's Sergio, and he's in sales up in the Hartford area. And they found me on YouTube and they've actually approached me from watching my videos on YouTube. So just organically, they searched for you. What did they search for? I don't even know what they searched for, but I was getting all these calls. And I said, they said, is this John Carbuti? I said, yeah. Like this guy, Sergio, called me about a week and a half, two weeks ago. And he said, is this John Carbuti? I said, yeah. He goes, I, I found you on YouTube. Yeah, I've been watching your videos and I'm thinking about getting into real estate. I said, that's great. He said, can I ask you a few questions? I said, sure. And we had a really wonderful conversation. And he's actually coming into the office and we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about him making a transition into real estate and if it's right Please. for him. And he's outside of the real estate space. He's outside of the real estate industry. Yeah, that's great. And if Actually, anyone's curious to know how those are optimized, you can literally go to John Carbuti's YouTube channel. It's in that link, or you can go to his agent recruiting blog and look at what's in the videos. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. It, and it, you know, I made some mistakes in the being in the beginning when I started um, the agent training video, where I was just, you know, I just took a bunch of area top producers and I just put them into the list and I was basically sending them videos and spamming them. And I wouldn't, Un, the word is unsolicited email. Unsolicited. And I would, I wouldn't suggest doing that. I made that mistake and I had a lot of people opting out or, mm -hmm. you know, why am I getting these videos? Well, let me, I'm going to go a little deeper on that, not to interrupt and you know, sure. here to see you, but we deal with this a lot. It's like, Oh, where'd you get these 30,000 realtors from? You want to email? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's like, come on. Yeah. You know, the best way is to what you're going to share now. And yeah. how did you really build a list of real recruits versus Absolutely. unsoliciting emailing everybody in the area? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the best ways I got some really good emails was um, going to the different real estate schools. Like I went to the Greater New Haven uh, Real Estate School run by the Greater New Haven Association of Realtors. And also Barbara Pure, one of my agents actually runs a real estate school out of Cromwell, Connecticut. And um, she would ask all of her like she has 47 people in her class right now. And she just asked the ones that haven't committed to a broker if they would mind if I contacted them and I, I put them into an agent training um, video blog where I'm sending them videos on how to grow their business and how to come basically come out of the gate running. So the real estate the schools are your feeder? Real estate schools are an untapped market. And um, everyone catch know, that? Let's say that again, where you're getting all your leads for recruits. Yeah, the real estate schools are phenomenal. I mean, everybody's got dollar signs in their eyes right now. They're all, they're all, they're packing them into these principles and practice class. Before where she could barely get 15 to 20 people in the class, she's got 45, 47 people in every class that she's starting. And you're getting all their contact information. They're I'm getting, getting all their email you. addresses, permission based too, by the way, she's mm -hmm. asking. And they're, and now, and, and the majority of them are saying, oh yeah, absolutely. I would love to. 
I would love to get these videos and I would love to be in this video block. Incredible. Yeah. Any other ways you're building your list of recruits? Um, that's really it. Um, most of the people have been calling me. Um, two of the, actually two of the people that are, um, out of the three people that are in the real estate school are actually were appraisals, appraisers that came from the appraisal industry and they contacted me and um, um, they contacted me from the YouTube videos. Great. And that Brittany. was surprising. That was very surprising. Bernie has a question. Okay. A little bit as I say your name. Um, thanks for asking. What is the most powerful topic used to recruit? <laughs> um, the most powerful topic. That's a good question. Um, I, I, I don't think there's really an, any one powerful topic that where you're just going to make a video and people are going to call you and say, oh, because I saw that wonderful video and topic, I want to join your company. Mm -hmm. I think people really have to get to know you. Facebook has been a really great um, recruitment tool for me, not necessarily they've been watching my videos. They do watch my videos, but when I've been friending other people on Facebook and they start to see my office culture, um, we have a closed Facebook page. And what I've done is I've invited a lot of other real estate agents who are in my marketplace into my closed Car Beauty Real Estate Facebook page. So they get to see our different posts and they get to see our 90 listings and 90 day challenge. We started on February 11th and all basically the high fives we give each other and like the production and the success stories. And I've actually had two agents join my company from other real estate firms that were in my closed Facebook page for over six months. And they said, wow, that's the kind of culture and that's the kind of team I want to belong to. Why doesn't my broker do that? Why doesn't my broker run office meetings have you and morning any, huddles? Have you gotten any calls from other angry brokers? No. This? Not, not, no? I don't call, I don't call these other real estate agents in other offices and ask them to join my company. It's the very way, passive the way all of these sales managers call my agents every single day, including my top agent, Amanda Zorovich, gets the same call from the same guy on the same day. And she knows when he's going to call, but she's not going anywhere because she closed over 40 transactions last year. And she knows if she goes over there, she's not going to get any business from me or my ISA. So yeah. they're happy. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now from, a recruiting content standpoint, I'll give a tip to everybody, is if you just go online and type in, I don't know, real estate lead generation, real estate lead conversion, real estate referrals, real estate something, um, go look at some of the ones that had the most views. Uh, you could probably tap into that for a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Like I know, um, you know, first person that comes to my mind for real estate videos, I think Tom Ferry has done a wonderful job for many years. Yeah. You know, go look at some of the titles that he has used and, you know, they'll copy it, but at least that topic is probably a pretty hot thing. And you can go on YouTube and find out which ones are getting the biggest, uh, the biggest um, bang for their buck. And Tom right. Ferry is great too. And in the beginning, I was, I was trying to model myself after Tom Ferry a little bit when I was doing the videos. He does cool. have some really good topics. All right. So, Prioritizing follow-up. Are you getting the names of the people that are watching those videos? For, um, like for the recruiting. I mean, are you calling maybe the people that are actually watching the recruiting videos? Um, I know this sounds funny. I don't call any of them. They call me. I've been, we've, we were actually up to 36 licensees at one time and I had to scale that down because I was hiring people way too quick. And that's, that's one of the mistakes I made in the beginning was I was like getting all of these people inquiring about joining the organization and I was hiring them way too quickly and I wasn't doing disc profile personality assessments and I wasn't asking the right questions and find out what motivates these guys. So okay. I was bringing the wrong agent on for a brand. So well, let's go a little deeper in that because Gary and Linda Carpenter here just asked that question. How many agents do you have on your team and how many of those are new or started new? Um, maybe, maybe tell us the whole story of kind of where they where they started off as and who actually ended up being successful. Sure. Um, the um, I have twelve agents on my team right now. Um, my top listing specialist, uh, Gary Stevens, actually came from another agency up in Westport, and he came, believe it or not, from a Craigslist ad. First guy that I ever had respond to uh, uh, a recruiting. Craigslist ad that I put in, and he is by far my top listing specialist. Um, 
my top buyer's agent on the team, Amanda Zorovich, was somebody that came in brand new into the industry from the appraisal industry about four years ago. And I trained her from the ground up. And um, I've had two people recently from other organizations join my team because they like the culture. And what we, no, Which is different than your brokerage. So let's go no, back. I take that back. I have three. I had three agents from other agencies in the last year join my team. And what was interesting was all three of them were at much higher commission splits at their old companies. And they saw the value uh, going in on a 50-50 split on my team. Okay. And not one okay. of them had a problem with that. Yeah. To answer Gary and Linda's question, you have 28 agents in your office, right? 28 total agents. 28 licensees, yes. 28 licensees, of which 12 of those are kind of on your systems, your team. Yep. Including a, including a full-time licensed um, transaction coordinator who doesn't sell, and then I have a licensed uh, ISA. Okay. And how many of the 28 are new or started new? Um, how many of the 28 of, are of new? Of the 28 agents you have now, how many of those are like just say brand new to real estate? Um, brand new? Mm -hmm. Seven. Okay. Fair enough. That's his question. And apparently Brenda says that we may not be able to get the names. The state says we may not be able to get the names of students from schools anymore. So we may have to look into that. So thanks for bringing that Brenda up. They, well, they can give you the names with, with the student's permission. Um, yeah, the that's right. Permission. They, yeah. If, if they have their permission to give you the, the email addresses and the names, they can absolutely do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, the, the new Haven real estate school, which is run by the greater new Haven association of realtors, um, the, the admin used to just email me the whole list in an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. But then we got to have the permission of the people as there. As long so as like, you have their permission. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as you get in with the instructor and just say, Hey, you know, you should really check out John. He makes these really great educational videos. Yeah. Maybe have like a flyer in there or something, you know, who knows? Yeah. That's great. Okay. So let's move on. So we talked about the real estate, two videos a month for your real estate business. Mm -hmm. We talked roughly about the recruiting of how you get the list, how you publish the videos, you're magically getting found it. And seriously, guys, you can go look at the example video blogs he has. They're in the links down in the, in the comments section of the Google Hangout to go take a look at this stuff. Now, we also worked on a lot of extra strategies outside of that core system of getting email addresses, making two videos a month, and calling people to watch them. Yeah. So let me say that again. The 80-20 rule of all of this is getting emails, permission-based emails of the audience you wanted to educate creating two educational videos a month. In this case, John took a little step further with some professional video production, which by the way, for six videos, you pay 300 bucks. Let me tell everyone that. That's a really, 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 really good deal. Great right? deal. Yeah. Um, the ones you see under the marketing plan on our website cost a thousand per video. And then per video. And then you call the people who watch them. So let's move on to some of the extra things that you're doing. Community video tours. Why don't you explain the theory behind that and what those are? Yeah, um, I, 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 when we have the warmer weather, I really want to get back into doing some other towns. But what we did was we started shooting. I got this idea from another um, uh, out, of, out of the area broker. What we did was we went around to the different towns and we started shooting um, like different things to do, places to eat, interviewing people in the community and kind of giving people a taste of the different what the different towns had to offer. And it's worked out tremendously, especially with my ISA. We've actually had situations where we've had out of town or out of state people like looking for a second home in Bramford, Connecticut. And my ISA has called them up on the phone and said, um, great, you're looking for a second home. You're looking in Bramford. You want to be on the water. This is the price range. You know what? It sounds to me like what you're really looking for is Guilford. Have you, are you familiar with Guilford, Connecticut? And they say, no, I'm not familiar with Guilford. Well, listen, my broker did this really great town tour on Guilford. I'm going to shoot you over a link to the, the video. Take a look at it. We actually had a situation where um, my ISA was talking to somebody that wanted to buy in Brantford, wasn't familiar with Guilford. We sent them the town tour for Guilford, Connecticut. They realized they fell in love with this beautiful town green that they didn't even know existed, and they wound up purchasing in Guilford. That's great. I love your town tours, by the way. They're the best I've ever seen. They Thank really you. are. They are the best. I have seen a lot of videos. Uh, what are some of the towns people can go type on YouTube right now? You did Durham, Connecticut town tour. Yeah, Durham, so you, um, so you Wallingford. Dur you type in Dur Durham Town Tour Car Beauty. I'm sure it'll show up. Guilford Town Tour Car Beauty. What yep. else? Wallingford um, Town Tour Car Beauty. Yep. Cheshire, uh, Milford, um, Middletown. Um, I think I got about eight on there right now, and I, I'm planning on doing another eight to ten this spring and summer. They're, yeah. they're incredible, John. Incredible. Yeah. And I want to say how we shot them was like you just went out to a park and just stood there and talked for two or three minutes. 
and then your video guy ran around and got b-roll of everything yeah what, much uh, time. if you go to the wallingford video um towards like three quarters in you'll see like downtown wallingford where like we're gliding along um funny story um my my um my video guy is actually into skateboarding. So he had a skateboard in his car. So he turned on the camera and he was on the skateboard and I was pushing him on the skateboard <laughs> down the sidewalk. And that's how we got that footage, that rolling footage. Uh, but it came out very professional. That's great. You had a great guy there. <laughs> yeah. So the town tours are fantastic. Uh, I should probably have asked you this, but are you building out community pages on your Boomtown site to drive up SEO? Um, with writing yes. out all the information with the videos on there? Absolutely, we are, we already have. We've done that in the last couple of years. And if, if you go to our Boomtown site at carbeautyrealestate.com and go down to the bottom, you'll see all the community guides. And when you go to the community guides for like Walling for Guilford and the videos are embedded right there. Since you started doing this, have you been tracking how, because you started off completely with pay-per-click. I mean, that's what you have to do. Yeah. But have you noticed your pay-per-click going down as your quality score of your website goes up because it's a better site with the content or have you seen an increase in organic lead traffic? Uh, um, to tell you the truth, um, with with the Boomtown, um, I've been with them since March of 2010. We really haven't gotten any more organic with Boomtown. And I don't think Boomtown is really an organic friendly site. So we're actually in the process of ac actually looking at some other um, um, different systems that are organic friendly. Okay, sure. And there's lots of different buyer sites out there. We'll take a look at that. But I was just Absolutely. curious to know if your organic has jumped up at all, because I do know some people that really like yeah. have created literally town tours of like yeah. every single neighborhood. Oh, yeah. When our website's not organic friendly, but when you go, like when you type in, I mean, if you type in Guilford, Connecticut and um, I mean, our video is right at the top. Our YouTube video is right at the top organically on Google. Cool. Absolutely. Okay. So let's take it a step further. So you got the town community tour videos, which are fantastic. And I would totally use those in the buyer lead follow-up. At least yep. you can even text them the video, like, you know, you know, go to Google Voice and take the YouTube link and text them the video. Say, here's a town they're, tour. They're, they're absolutely great with the buyers, but they're even better with the sellers. So when you're going in for a listing presentation, um, that's the way we set us up, ourselves up as the area expert. So like if somebody hasn't heard of me or they might not be familiar with my company, um, when we show them the town tour video that we've done for their town where they're about to be listing their house, they love us. They absolutely love to see their town. Great. So let's move on to how else you're using video. These are the extra strategies outside of the core two video month viral marketing plan. Yeah. Is the co-marketing interviews with local business owners. Yes. Tell me the strategy and the idea behind that. Yeah, um, it's interesting how that happened. It just I just started doing my first, I shot my first video in November and then um, I made them my um, December small business community spotlight of the month. And um, it was a local barber who opened up a barber shop in town and absolutely pays dividends. And I went in there and I shot his whole, um, his whole new space. I interviewed the barber. Um, we made like a two minute, two and a half minute video and we, sh we sent it out. Um, we sent it out to our database. We also, um, did boot pages on Facebook and the response we got from it was unbelievable. Not only from like the general public, but other business owners, I got like a backlog of like 25 I, businesses. I believe it. Okay. That want me to highlight and spotlight their video. And, Incredible. and what's happening is, is that like they see us not as just like another real estate company or somebody trying to get their business. They see us somebody as a true partner in the community that's interested in their business. Our, the last video we just did for February was of a local sandwich shop that's been open less than um, a year. It's called the eatery. That business, he, when I first walked in and I approached him about shooting the video, I asked if we could shoot a video. He was skeptical. He wasn't sure. And um, finally, I got him to agree to. And he didn't know I was going to shoot the video right there and then. I went out to the car and I grabbed my video guy and brought him in. And we mic'd him up. We interviewed him. He talked about why he started the sandwich shop, talked about um, what his specialties are. Um, he also does this. He also has this community board, uh, board every month called the Lampshade that's very near and dear to his heart about different like charity organizations. And I got him talking about the lampshade on the video. It was one of the best videos I ever did. And the response I got from the eatery was incredible. I haven't paid for a sandwich since I've gone down to that place. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So we just got to go a little deeper on this because what you're doing is the future. So I'm in this every day. And when I came back to you four years, I showed you the future and you were, you jumped on board before anyone else did. Like yeah. you signed up right away. 
Yeah. And you were doing things that are the future. And as cost, as more and more people get into the game of buying leads, you know, Zillow's only get more expensive. Oh, uh, Cost clicks only get more expensive. Facebook ads for those seller lead gen things I see every day only get more expensive. Yeah. Right. Um, what you're doing is becoming the local Angie's list for all the local business owners. And you're going to have all these recommended, you know, my, my preferred, you know, businesses I love. And, you know, you're a sales and marketing expert, John. That's what you do. That's what you sell people. That's the service you sell. You know, most Absolutely. business owners don't have these skill sets. So you're going to these business owners and you're kind of just co-creating a video about their business. And then you put up on your website and people say, that's great. But there's one thing that we're missing that is could explode your lead gen. We got to get the business owner you're interviewing to mail it to their list. Yes. So we can get back to your website. Absolutely. And that video with a write-up needs to go on their website with a backlink to your home search site for inbound links to drive up the quality score and organic traffic of your site. Absolutely. That's smart. So I would say from a, just a talk, you know, standpoint is that if we can capitalize on those two things of getting the business owners to mail on it, that's the slang, mm -hmm. and getting the business owners to, to link back to you on their site with that content, that's going to be the force multiplier that no other agent will be able to compete because you're going to have all the links and you're going to have all those databases. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> all right. So the co-marketing videos have been very powerful. So we got a question here Huge. from Brian. Huge. Uh, question here from Brian. So how many, uh, how many of your agents are also doing videos? Um, none. Why? Um, because I'm really the face and the brand of Car Beauty and Company. Um, and I'm the face of my of my team. I mean, at the end of the day, it's my name on the company. And I think I need to be the one doing the videos. And that's, you know, it, I think if I had, you know, if I had 12 members on my team that each well, one, do they, do they even want to do the videos? They, they don't want to do the videos. Yeah. They that's, don't want the, to. that's the premise. Yeah. I mean, if they wanted to do the videos and they wanted to pay this, you know, take the time to shoot the videos and then brand themselves each individually, then why would I want them on my team? Cause sure. it's really about the team. Yeah. Okay. I would probably say if they really wanted to is, you know, so you post the video up on your Facebook page. Yeah. You know, if your whole team went in and just reshared that video on their Facebook out to their database. Yeah. That could be done. Um, I know that's worked really well for recruiting. Like if you make a recruiting video, mm -hmm. you know, your, your whole office could go just share that video on their Facebook saying, Oh, I love where I work. If you're thinking about real estate. You should talk yeah. to John. Well, that's uh, when you get that video. It's like force. It's like getting a forced viral effect out to, the databases of all your agents for recruiting. Well, actually what's been really powerful too with the new agents coming in is um, I interviewed my agents and asked them why they chose Carbutin Company and asked them to give advice to a new agent coming into the business. And we have some of those links on my agent training video blog. But what I've done is like when I've gotten somebody like interested in um, real estate or interested in talking to me about a career in real estate, I send them a follow-up email and I send them a link to those videos and they actually love watching um, the agent interviews and they can relate to that. Okay. Well, that's really all the questions I have. I usually like to open up the last 12 minutes for open Q and a, so yeah. a lot of viewers here sitting here watching the videos. <laughs> Come look at us. We're live right here. We're two guys hanging out, talking business. I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far, but if you have any questions for John, feel free to ask it over here and I'll be happy to, to ask it. Sure. It's a little intimidating though when you're watching these, like, you know, here's your name and <laughs> you ask the questions. <laughs> but I guess, you know, while we're doing that, um, I'm just going to throw you some more general questions. Sure. Um, you know, oh, we got one. Aaron has a question upfield. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate you asking the question. How do you utilize the small business database? Do you send them offers, real estate education? That's, this. that's probably a question for me, Aaron. Okay. I think what you're getting at here is, you know, let's say this sandwich shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have, maybe they have a database. They have a Facebook page. They have emails they've collected. You know, the, you know, the business cards that you put in. Yeah. They Absolutely. put those into their, their spreadsheet, right? You know, how do you utilize that? Well, you know, I would assume that the business owner has like a, a, mail, a MailChimp or constant contact account and you say, hey, in your next newsletter, or can you send an email out saying, hey, this is Joe, the owner of the sandwich shop. John Kirby is awesome. He's like the best real estate agent ever. He made an amazing video uh, mm -hmm. about, you know, why you got to come eat sandwiches here. We talk about this, but if you need to buy or sell a home, you got to hire John. Um, he buys sandwiches for me. And uh, if you're thinking about buying a house, you can search homes for sale on his, on his site here. Or if you're thinking of selling your house, you can get a free home value report here. Now imagine if you can get, what, 50 business owners to send an email like that out to their customer lists, all driving traffic back to your site to opt in for leads 
And what's the cost of that? Zero, outside of giving up with the content, right? Yeah. Um, or even, like I said, even they should post up on their sites, linking back to yours, which gives you those wonderful inbound backlinks that Google loves so much for, for a ranking. Um, I think that's the answer to the question uh, for the business owner's database. No, we don't send them, we, I wouldn't send them real estate education. It would just be, and no, the business owner is not handing over their database. They're not doing that. They're just sending an email out to theirs telling them about John, maybe linking back to his site. But, yeah. I, I can't stress the importance of doing these um, small business videos. And one of the videos that we did was for a flower shop, a family business, family owned flower shop in town that's been in business for over 50 years, um, second generation. That guy was almost in tears. Like he couldn't believe that I was so interested in his business and to try to drive traffic and drive business and drive awareness to his local family owned business in downtown Wallingford. And I mean, the guy knows, the guy knows everybody that's getting married. He's doing weddings. He's doing um, bar mitzvahs. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's a, it's amazing once they see that you're genuinely interested in their business and helping them grow their business and you're sincere, they're going to give business to you. And we're already getting referrals from these guys. You know, here's what's going to happen next, John. You're going to have yeah. your own coaching company. I mean, me and John are just hanging out now if you want yeah. to hang out here for the next nine minutes. But what's going to happen is you're going to have to start a coaching company with all these business owners because you're very sharp when it comes to sales and marketing. That, that, that's the service you sell for a living. You're yeah. a marketing sales professional. That's it's funny you say that because um, with the agent training blog, I've actually had a lot of um, out-of-state brokers contacting me. So they've been watching my videos. I'm not sure where they've been watching my videos or how, but um, they've been calling me and saying, oh, I just saw your video on this. Can you send me your daily inside sales assistant form um, that you use with your ISA? I said, great. So I send it over to them. They go, great. And they go, can I ask you another question? Hey, do you have 15 minutes, 20 minutes? So I got these guys calling me, taking me, taking 15, 20 minutes of my time and saying, okay, what are you doing for this? What are you doing? They go, wow, that was really informative. So I've actually had four to five agents approach me about doing private coaching. I just don't have the that's, time. That's not what you do. You want to That's coach not what I do. Exactly. I don't have but a coaching company. But, but here's where you take it a step further is that let's say you do these town, these, um, I don't know, business owner interviews with say 25 business owners, all non-competitors, right? Yeah. I would say probably every two to three months, you should go buy them all dinner and get them all in a room and yeah. just walk around and do a mastermind with everybody. Just like you're in the real estate space. It's a great idea. I mean, in, in real estate, we, we are exposed to masterminds. We're exposed to vi videos like this. I mean, it's the yeah. most like over-trained industry there is out there. There's so much yeah. training, right? Oh, yeah. And for the average business owner, just to have them experience a hangout like this, or even just a small mastermind group would blow their mind. And you'd be such, you would get all the referrals forever and they would be happy to mail on their yeah. list all the time for you. Yeah. I, and I, I think, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of real estate agents who are getting in the business mm -hmm. think that they're in the real estate business. They're not, they're in the marketing business. You are yeah. in the marketing business. All right. So we got, we got a good question here from Gary and Linda. Um, oh, Gary Carpenter. <laughs> Hi, Gary. <laughs> I know Gary. All right. So, um, Frank, we'd love to see the barber video. Can you send us a link? I'm on YouTube. Where would I search for that? Um, just go to, um, it's, um, yeah, just go to the car, car, uh, youtube.com forward slash car. Here, Real Here it is. It's uh, just go to YouTube, type in community spotlight, Dino's modern barber shop. I just that, was to the, that was the first one we ever did. Yep. Community spotlight, Dino's modern barber shop. And I just typed in John Carbuti barber into Google. Cool. <laughs> gotta, love, gotta love Google, right? <laughs> All right. Let's go to a, uh, let's see here. We have a question from Sergeant Scraps. What video camera and mic do you use to shoot your small business and town videos? I don't, I don't even know what, I don't even know what kind of camera my guy uses. I, I don't do any of it. Yeah. I, um, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you the make of his mic. I'll, I know throw, that I'll throw some options out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're using a professional video guy. I mean, and that five grand yeah. um, for probably the setup that he has in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Probably to start with videos, I would start with a webcam like this. This is the Logitech C90, C920. Great webcam. And then my audio is coming through the headset, so I sound really good. Um, just for everyone who's interested, this is what the audio sounds like if you actually come through the webcam. Get a difference, John? Big difference. So that's the webcam, and now I'm back on the microphone. That's why I have this crazy-looking headset on me. But if you don't like the headset, you can certainly get the Yeti mic. So it looks like this. It's about $100. And this sits right here off camera and you don't have to wear the headset and the audio goes into this in the computer. So if you have the Yeti mic or a microphone, you have a Logitech C920. Yeah. And then up here, 
I have a little light shining on me, so I'm well lit. See that? So that's probably the least expensive setup if you're going to be shooting videos at your desk. Then you can go a step further and you can grab what I, put, I took it away. You know, a little handy cam for a thousand bucks with a wide angle lens, like a Canon handy cam, a top end consumer camcorder. And after that, you, once you start topping out at a thousand, fifteen hundred for a consumer camcorder, now you're in the professional series. And you have to, it's not only the camera, you, here's the deal it's not even really about the camera. It's the person using the camera that knows how to get the shots and stitch it and editing in their head while they're shooting it. And also the person that can sit there and edit it just so it's perfect. So it's a lot more than just the camera to get these videos to look good. Okay. What do you pay your shooting and video editing guy? I think we asked this from Chromecast. Chromecast asks. <laughs> it, um, it, you know, it, it varies. I mean, when he's, um, you know, when he's doing like, um, um, like a property video tour, if we're just doing like a narrated video tour of a property, I mean, usually anywhere from like $200 to $250. Um, those town video tours actually take about six to seven hours of shooting. So it's an all day thing. And even like with him there all day and then going back and editing the video and uploading it, probably the most I've ever paid for those town videos was maybe like $425, $450. And what I have to say here is the reason this is successful and you're getting business is your video guy is good at shooting and getting videos. Yes. And then those are sent to us and then we yeah. market them. Yeah. To find somebody that's good at shooting videos that can also do the successful marketing of them is going to be a very expensive and very difficult hire in my opinion. Yes. So it, good. I, I'll, it, it, it makes sense to hire somebody to shoot your videos. You want that video quality to be the best and that audio quality to be, mm -hmm. be the best. You want to spend that money because that is your brand. Those videos have become my brand. Other agents associate those videos with us. So our brand has gone from you know here to there. So that is your brand. You don't want to skimp at all. And I mean, you can even put a value on um, a couple hours of your time. Cool. Well, if there's any, feel free to ask any more questions the last four minutes we have here. But I guess if anyone's still sticking around for the hangout, you know, why have you hired viral marketing? Why haven't you fired us yet? What, um, <laughs> what tell us about viral, man. What would should someone want to know if they want to get involved with us? Yeah. There's a lot of things I could say about viral. Um, it, it's, you're not, you're not hiring viral just to, um, help you shoot some videos and just send these videos to your database. You're hiring a company that is going to help you put systems in place and help you strategize a, about the long term, not just the short term. So it, it's what I love about viral is that, you know, they're always coming up with new ideas. They're always staying ahead of the curve. They're always thinking outside the box. Um, and they're not, they're not, they're, they're doing things that are tested. They're not just, you know, it's not just a company that I'm paying a fee to every month wondering why am I paying this fee. I can call these guys up at any time and run ideas by them. I could call up Frank and bounce ideas about um, off of him. And, you know, he'll tell me. He, he's actually talked me out of doing things. Like, I've, I've bounced some ideas off you and saying, I want to do this. And you're like, don't waste your money. I've had another client do well, this. Well, because we're talking to so many top agents it, all the time, I can probably forward yeah. on the information what we tried. Like so right now, we're, we're trying to like retarget buyer leads with retargeting on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we're in like $600 and we got one phone call and it's horrible. Yeah. And I'm trying to do everything I possibly can in that strategy. I can't get it to work. And if I can't yeah. get it to work with a client that I have that has an amazing database and that type of ad budget, it's probably not going to work for somebody else. It's probably not going to be effective. Exactly. You know, you, know you, you talk about coaching. I mean, really, that's what you're hiring when you're hiring viral marketing because you're not just a marketing company. You're a coaching company. I mean, in effect, Consult that's what I'd you're doing. I'd say consulting. You're a consulting, consulting company. company. Yeah. And, um, you know, you guys, I've seen you guys evolve and I've seen your strategies evolve and some of the things that you are doing, I mean, just kind of blow my mind as far as like how, how you've taken it from this level to the next level. And I mean, I know you and I and just were talking your prices, before. Your price has never changed. Yeah. And my price has never changed. Um, right. and, and, um, we were just talking a, a, a before the Google Hangout about another strategy that we're going to try with the direct mail. And I mean, I'm excited to, to, to try that strategy in my marketplace because I know no one's doing it and I know it's going to be effective. So, Well, John, I appreciate that. And I want to appreciate everyone for coming to the Hangout today. Um, like I said, these are just designed for me to drill questions to find out what is working. I do them for our clients. I do them for people thinking about working with us. I do these for you. 
So any feedback you can give me on the comments of maybe better questions we can ask, guests, topics, whatever it may be, let me know. But uh, John, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the Hangout today. It was very valuable, and you shared a lot of good information, really, that people can learn from. If you want to get and stay subscribed again, sign up for our weekly new newsletter on our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our Google Plus page. I try to do these, these database marketing Hangouts for you every two weeks, every other Thursday. And then we have the next one we have in two weeks is with Jeremy Larkin. He is a top agent in St. George, Utah, smaller market, kind of like you, um, John. Yeah. And he will do 150 deals this year by himself as his own rainmaker without a single outbound prospecting call. 150 deals without a single outbound prospecting call. And he had to build his business and it really kind of entirely from scratch because he was an REO agent for you know three years ago, entirely all REO, and had to switch over to entire listing retail and did it successfully, profitably, without having to do any outbound calling, which is incredible. That's great. And we're gonna and we're gonna go through that on the next hangout. So if anyone would like to see that, make sure you be able to follow us here at Vile Market. But we'll end it there. I want to say, John, thank you so much for your time, and everyone, go have a wonderful day.